DT12 main shaft speed sensor. Um, you probably wonder what is this sensor and what does it do and where it's located. Uh, to start this video, I'm gonna mention then I'm gonna refer to replacing the sensor. And in this case, the problem that we had was a, f a faulty sensor. But before you do any repair on the transmission, double check that anything around the transmission is in a good condition and double check all the measurements, voltage, and resistance of the sensor so you get the right repair. Otherwise, you're gonna end up doing the repair then it's not going to fix your problem. What is the main shaft sensor? Well, the main, cha main shaft sensor is the one that reads the main speed from the engine all the way to the transmission. So the clutch is in between the transmission and the engine. So that is the speed, the one that is powered by the engine, that is basically the main shaft sensor. It's the same speed of the engine. So if the engine speed is 600 RPMs, the main shaft sensor gotta be 600 RPM. Pretty basic. Um, now, uh, what, uh, What's the problem? Why this one go bad? Well, I mean, eventually they go bad. Maybe the wiring sometimes, maybe the sensor itself. And the reason why they go bad is because they go inside the transmission. Sadly, you have to remove the transmission completely, take it apart to remove the sensor. That is really bad and very expensive too. And, uh, there is, and that's one of the reasons why it goes bad because uh, it is exposed to debris of the transmission, exposed to high temperature of the transmission, and anything, anything can happen inside the transmission. But also the wiring has to be double checked, as I said before. And um, as I said before, the specific problem that we had here is because of the sensor was bad, but double check everything before you do any repair. Um, now to the repair. Uh, Detroit released a bulletin on the repair of this uh, DT12 main shaft transmission sensor. Um, it, they explained step by step on how to do the repair and they gave some information on how to do the repair. They didn't give you all the information on what you have to do step by step, but they gave you the basics so that way you can understand what we need to do if this is the case if we need to replace the sensor. Something very important to keep in mind is that Detroit doesn't show specific details on what you need to do specifically. It is just a generic repair, what they give you. So uh, in order to do a successful repair, you have to practice this repair a couple of times to be um, very successful at, at doing this repair. And also something else thing I can point out is then once you open the transmission, there is no guarantee that the transmission is going to work fine because if you do something wrong, the transmission is going to go bad anyway. So uh, this is something that has to be done with so much patience, with so much care, and it needs to be done in an open area where you can have all the tools necessary to lift the transmission, to remove all these components because these are heavy components. They're not pretty light. Now, um, in the case of this truck, uh, we were having problems with the DT12 main shaft uh, uh, speed sensor. And sometimes the transmission was going into gear, sometimes was not going into gear. Sometimes when it was driving, it was going to neutral or it was uh, showing uh, two liter dashes on the transmission selection numbers and uh, that was because of the main shaft was failing. Once we pulled the codes out of the uh, computer, we found out and yes, it is the main shaft uh, sensor, the one is failed. Um, it didn't happen all the time, it mostly happened when the uh, transmission was pretty hot. And when the transmission was not uh, hot at all, when you, as soon as you start the engine, it was running fine, but once uh, you start moving, like probably uh, three hours, four hours on the road, you're gonna start showing cuts about the main shaft sensor on this DT12 transmission. So, uh, how to remove this uh, sensor? Well, as I said before, the transmission has to be removed. If you don't know how to remove a DT12 transmission, I have a couple videos on my channel. You can check my channel and you're gonna see 
uh, how to remove the transmission. Basically, the way you're going to remove the transmission is the same way how you're going to remove the clutch. So it's basically the same. The only situation here is then you have to remove the whole transmission out of the vehicle. So you have to leave the vehicle high enough to get the transmission out. If you don't do so, you won't be able to do this job or it will be harder. Um, I would say then if you are capable to do this job, you can do the uh, repair on the spot. You don't have to do, drop the transmission, but you have to have special tools to handle this uh, rear component of the transmission because it's pretty heavy. I would just suggest that it's better to remove the transmission so that way you can put everything back the way it was. It's pretty easier. I mean, it's easier to do it with the transmission completely removed and in a vertical position. So that's what we had to do. We removed the transmission completely and we placed the transmission in a vertical position so that way we can access um, all the components of the transmission with not um, no major issue because uh, once you have full access to the transmission, you can see what else needs to be moved to the left, what needs to uh, need to move to the right, and what needs to be aligned, and all that. So uh, it's pretty basic, I would say. But um, uh, you remove all the bolts and everything. You remove the uh, oil pump, which is this one right here, and uh, you remove other components around, mostly bolts, and you have to remove and hoses uh, of the range selectors and all that. Uh, it's nothing hard to do. It's just mainly then you have to be patient and do it right. If you do it wrong, it's going to be very expensive. So once you do that, all you have to do is like lift the transmission, uh, the rear tail of the transmission up, and uh, you have to do it carefully because this component is pretty tight. You have to do it uh, a liter by liter because the guide of this component is not uh, something that you wanna uh, break or you wanna you know damage. So still, this thing comes with specific bolts that you need to insert because uh, to to disattach the glue from the housing of the other housing so that way you can separate both of, both of the housings and uh, uh, that will start the movement uh, to remove this uh, tail of the transmission and once you get it out uh, you can just like start lifting it with a different component with a hoist with a forelick or anything you have to lift this it's pretty heavy it's gonna be very hard to do it by yourself so if you want to do it by hand if you don't have a uh, assistance of a machine you can use maybe one or two different uh, persons around you so that way you can leave this component pretty easily otherwise it's going to be very hard and you're going to have struggle to maneuver this um, device this component this tail of transmission and you might be uh, in the possibility of damaging this component which is not going to be cheap um, uh, once you remove it completely of course you can see there is the main chaff speed sensor. I have no idea why Detroit or Mercedes-Benz in this case, the Mercedes then decided to insert the sensor inside the transmission. I have no idea why. I get it. I think at some point I get the idea. They have sometimes they want to get the best reading possible of the shaft. But the counter shaft, which is on the side, has the sensor in the exterior. You can remove the sensor without removing the, uh, removing the transmission, without opening the transmission. But the main shaft, they decided to put it inside the transmission, which amplifies the amount of money you have to spend to do this repair. And I mean, the time, the downtime of this truck to get repair. Um, one thing I will say, and I will repeat it again, if you have um, a, this problem and just because you're seeing this video you want to replace the sensor don't do it just like that be sure to double check everything be sure to double check the fault cause the troubleshooting and the physical data of the vehicle because if you do this repair and this is not a problem for any reason let's say then the main shaft sensor is not a problem it is the wiring or it is the computer um let's say then that is not a problem you do repair and you do you do the repair and it's not done right you're gonna have a very very expensive mistake 
and I will not recommend it if you are not sure then this is the solution to your problem. So double check it all the time. This is something very expensive. Digital transmissions are not cheap. They're very expensive and also they're very complicated. So if you have no experience as well, don't do this job because it's going to cost a lot of money. But at the end, once we had the transmission all in place, uh, we, um, you know, torque everything to specification and everything. And then after that, it is time to put it back in the truck. After we did this repair, this truck went for two trips, zero problems. The problem never come back because of course the problem was the sensor. Um, but sadly, this is a very, very expensive repair. Um, you're looking to spend just to repair around like maybe like three thousand to four thousand dollars maybe more depending on the components that you have to replace because you have to drop the transmission so once you drop the transmission you have to drain the fluid of the transmission which means then you have to add new fluid um, if the clutch is bad well you might as well replace it since you already removed it um, if the split pin is bad okay might as well replace it since you already removed the transmission which is going to be easier any other component is bad so I think then uh, you the minimum amount of money I will say the average I will say maybe like three thousand five hundred dollars just replacing this sensor. And maybe you can go all the way to ten thousand dollars, depending on the different components that you may have to replace to do this repair. But um, very important to keep in mind then if you don't have to replace other components. I mean, you don't need to repair the components. If if you only need to replace the sensor, just replace the sensor. But if the other components are bad, take the advantage of the situation. Then you already have everything out of the way. Anyway, the labor cost is not going to be much. It's going to be maybe little, mirror, uh, very little, or it's just not going to charge. They're not going to charge you anymore because they already have everything open. So. Uh, this is not something that um, uh, is pretty fun to talk about, I would say, because it's a very expensive repair and it's not a very easy job to do either. Uh, there is so many components that we need to remove to get this transmission out. And, and it is not something that um, uh, we feel pretty confident on doing because this transmission can break at any time. Another thing, another very important step that you have to do after you put the transmission together and you do the sensor replacement, uh, you have to do a transmission calibration. You have to relearn the transmission completely. Most, most of the time the transmission doesn't understand the position of the components because you open all these components. So the transmission will not go into the air. So uh, to fix this situation, you have to go into calibration mode. So that way the transmission starts relearning all the position of these components and then you want to be able to apply gears. Other, other than that, I mean, it, it looks like the transmission is not working fine. Well, as soon as you put it all together and you mount it to the truck, it looks like the transmission is not cooperating, it's not right, something is wrong. So all you have to do is the calibration. Very important, just remember that. And also be sure to have the DDL software to do this because that is what you need to um, do this repair mostly. Uh, to diagnose the repair and to do the calibration. Um, but uh, this is pretty much all I'm going to be sharing with, the, with this uh, DD12 main shaft speed sensor. Very complicated topic, I would say, because uh, there is many reasons why this main shaft speed sensor can go wrong. Uh, but depending on the fault question you have, that is going to identify what could be the issue. But most likely, the sensor could be the problem. Just remember to double check everything before you open the transmission because it's not going to be a cheap repair and it's not going to be just a sensor replacement, just plug and play, just remove the sensor and just put it back. Sadly, Detroit didn't do it like that. I have no idea why they decided to put the sensor all the way hidden in it, uh, but um, it is the way it is and we have to deal all the transmissions regardless of the year, they have the sensor in the same location. So we need to deal with this and um, there is no other way to repair it. Well, uh, I hope this video was informative enough for you guys. I wanted to just speak what is right to say and to the point. 
I took a little longer to explain it completely, but I wanted to give you the best detail possible without giving you too much. Um, and um, it's very important that you guys understand and uh, digital trust transmissions are very complicated and expensive. If you have no experience working on digital trust transmissions, just don't do it because that is going to cost very, 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 I mean, like a very high, very expensive. I mean, the cost of it if something goes wrong. So just, you know, step back if you don't feel that you have the experience, nothing wrong with that. Um, and if you have the experience, even though then you have done many, just take your time too, because we never know, we make mistakes. So these DD12 transmissions are very complicated and we don't want to make any mistakes. We want to prevent the mistakes by repairing the problems. So um, very important to keep in mind. As it is, this is all I have for you for this video. Um, and I hope then uh, you guys uh, find uh, this information pretty attractive, especially on the topic of aromatic transmissions. Um, if you have anything else to add to this video, you can comment below. Add anything you want, questions, uh, recommendations, experiences, uh, problems, if you, if you ever solve problems or solutions. Um, uh, on Instagram, you can find me as Francisco Maya YouTube. You can find different content that I have there. If you can ask me if uh, you have uh, any questions, may be able to answer you. And if you want to come to the shop, you can just come, just type on Google my name, Francisco Amaya, uh, and, and you want to come directly to the shop. Or if not, you have to, uh, uh, here is the address, uh, 8215 Beach Avenue in Fontana, California. It's pretty easy to get here anyway, but uh, this is all I have for you. If you have any problems with your main shaft DT12 transmission, well, I mean, I can take care of that, but it's not going to be shipped. That's something that I can guarantee. Thank you.